been using ultrasound in our intensive care unit from 2006. Bedside ultrasound has revolutionized our uh, uh, care of patients in the ICU. Initially migrated to uh, ultrasound plus peripheral nerve stimulation and now uh, for the last 10 years we have completely migrated to enter ultrasound gui guided region anesthesia. I've been in the field of critical care for uh, last almost uh, 17 years and very early in the career itself I started using ultrasound machine. Uh, we've uh, been exclusively using Sonocyte ultrasound machines. We started with the Sonocyte Micromax uh, and then we had the M-Turbo and now uh, we have a number of Edge 2 machines. And we've had the privilege of uh, using the Exporte machine for a uh, while as well. We uh, here in CMC um, uh, Velo have been using it for um, in, in the ICU for head ultrasound, uh, raised ICP. We use it extensively for lung ultrasound. Um, you know, we use echocardiography for hemodynamic assessments of all patients, um, as well as abdomen and vascular uh, evaluations. And uh, so the ultrasound has become a very core part of our evaluation of a patient and every day on rounds we, we use ultrasound just like we would use uh, a stethoscope. The first ultrasound machine which we got in 2008 was the Sonoset M-Turbo and the latest addition to our ultrasound is a Exporte machine. The Exporte, uh, we were lucky to have uh, procure an Exporte because it has got a XDI imaging technology which gives you a much better image resolution and the screen is also much superior and large. Ultrasound has been used in a great extent for point of care ultrasound, whether it is fast or faith or lung ultrasound. We've been using Sonocyte for almost 12 years now. We've had no complaints, easy to maintain and exemplary uh, usage. Um, multiple hands have been using it. So when we do receive a patient from the emergency department, let's say a patient with respiratory failure uh, and shock, um, so in the initial assessment, you know, somebody examines the patient, they start stabilizing the patient. The ultrasound is one of the first things that we do to try and evaluate why this patient has shock. Uh, we use it uh, repeatedly to decide whether the patient is volume responsive and whether we should be giving fluid. And once we've done that, um, we do a lung ultrasound to try and evaluate the cause of the respiratory failure because of course we found that lung ultrasound gives us way more information than the chest x-ray does. Uh, almost as much as a CT scan, but of course we don't need to move the patient. Uh, it is very important to understand the use of ultrasound as a stethoscope or something like a cardiac output monitor. So when you have a patient who develops acute hemodynamic instability, not all our OTs have cardiac output monitors. It is important to understand that seeing is believing. With the ultrasound, it has uh, changed the way we approach acute hemodynamic instability. We do a transthoracic echo to understand the cardiac function, uh, stroke volume and cardiac output. It, uh, the IVC diameter is helpful in measuring the preload of the heart and um, together we are able to manage these critically ill patients in a much more scientific way. Right from all mundane activities of a neurointensive care uh, like a traumatic uh, facial injury with closed swollen eyes we can still manage to see for the pupillary reaction with this machine and of course for non-invasive measurement of ICP. Uh, from there on, for all the routine ICU work like vascular access um, and the guided vascular access has really brought the incidence of any complication much lower. It is utilized for measuring the optic nerve sheath diameter, not only for trauma as a non-invasive ICP measurement. We've recently published its usefulness in seeing how good the shunt has been or the CSF diversion procedure has been, especially in children where you don't want to expose them to repeated CT scanning. We typically have uh, you know, about six to eight uh, hands-on ultrasound workshops every year about three to four basic and three to four advanced. And each workshop is a two-day workshop. And uh, unlike traditional workshops, it does not have any lectures. Uh, it is a completely hands-on kind of a workshop. We have been training our trainees for the last five years with an annual ultrasound guided regional anesthesia workshop. It is important to train our next generation in the use of ultrasound. I thank 
Sona said for their wonderful support for both a basic and advanced ultrasound guided regional anesthesia workshop. I'd like to especially mention how point of care ultrasound has been useful during this COVID pandemic. So there were a lot of barriers to the usual or the traditional diagnostic modalities. And that's where ultrasound really stepped in. Uh, we used ultrasound extensively uh, for uh, you know, lung ultrasound to evaluate. It's almost like doing a mini CT scan at the bedside. And uh, during the COVID pandemic, uh, we actually uh, went ahead and purchased many more machines because we realized we needed these machines uh, to manage COVID patients and it was very difficult to do it without them. In the hardest of the times, Sonocyte was the best friend we had uh, during COVID times. With chest x-rays becoming more and more difficult to attain, uh, almost every individual underwent uh, chest ultrasound every six to eight hourly and almost all the decisions were done by the point of care uh, ultrasound examination of the chest and uh, it was an integral part in deciding whether the patient wanted intubation or was he good for coming off ventilation to an NIV whatever the condition be ultrasound did support us and the information obtained was invaluable in practicing during COVID times. <laughs>